On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1974. We're going to be taking a look at Matt Munro, and he's going to be singing Walk Away. <laughs> Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So Matt was another one of those singers that was much requested in the comments section. And this is a live vocal, by the way. We'll have a listen to the isolated vocal and see what we can hear and see what we can see. So if you want to watch this the whole way through without me interrupting it and with the band in the background, because this is going to be an isolated vocal, click on the link in the description below. But let's jump into this and see how Matt gets on. La, la, la. Walk away, please go. Before you throw your life away. A life that I could share for just a day We should have met some years ago For your sake I say, walk away, please go Walk away and live A life that's full With no regret Don't look back at me I'm just going to jump in here because we've got the voice on the right hand side being represented by that yellow line and we've got the pitch along the left hand side in case you want to Relate that to the piano underneath to find the range, and I've put the ranges on there as well, so you can see exactly the notes that Matt is singing. But I wanted to have the video footage on screen, and I'm hoping that it's not going to make this video get blocked, because this is from the BBC, and the BBC do block, or at least everything that I've done in the past from the BBC has been blocked. But fingers crossed this one will get through, because it is so important to watch Matt when he's performing, he's not just singing the song, he is performing the song. He's using all of his body to put across that lyrical content of the song, but put across the emotions as well. And it's almost like that musical theatre approach to delivering a song to tell the story of the song. Something that's really important with the vocal delivery that he does is leave gaps. He's not holding on notes for a long time all the time sometimes he will just hold a note and we can see that great vibrato really consistent and as i just run it back through the video you'll be able to see the way that we've got this perfect spacing between our peaks and our troughs at the bottom but just having the even gap between our lines here that just signify great vibrato, great control and consistency. When we're looking at the amount of pitch that we're covering with vibrato here, it's quite dramatic. We've got two, three, sometimes four semitones. Let's just have a look here. We've got one, two, three, and we do touch down to four. So it is a wide vibrato, but this is just the style. This is what you'll find in other singers that sing this genre, and I have done a few of them on the channel previously, and you can check those out independently if you want to, but they've all got that wide vibrato, but it's under control. They've always got these even waves going on in the pitch graph that we look at. But let's just run it on from this point. Before you throw your life away, a life that I could share for just a day We should have met And I'm just going to stop it there because that was a great example of what I was talking about a second ago allowing some notes to be held and have that vibrato on there but then I love the way that Matt just mixes it up 
to highlight the lyrical content of the song, but also to make you wait to hear what he's going to say next and give you a little bit of thinking time for the previous phrases that we've just heard. So we can see as we go back here, we've got held notes, held notes here. We've got vibrato, vibrato, and we keep on going forward. And then we get this. He should have met. So there's nothing there. So many singers would have gone, mm, we should have met. And, and try and fill in all of that space because they're not telling the story of the song. They're just singing a song. And this is the thing about Matt's delivery here is that he's in the story of the song. So you're not really listening to a singer. Of course we are but you're listening to a story and they're totally different things because when you're watching someone sing, then you might be listening to the notes they're hitting and it might be impressive, they've got great control, but you don't connect with the story of the song because they're just singing a song, they're not telling a story. But let's jump back into it. A life that's full with no regret. Don't look back at me. Again, great mix there, cutting off that note, but then the next phrase holding on a bit of vibrato. And the other thing that Matt does is just forget about pitch. And I know it sounds crazy to say that because he's singing, but with the expression in the vocal, a life that's full. A life that's full. And he's not even bothered about where that full is going to because he's just talking it. This is another thing that is so difficult to do, is to transition from your voice when you've got a supported breath and you're going through all of your techniques, vibrato, maintaining pitch, and then transitioning into your talking voice that obviously is gonna increase the storytelling quality of the voice and it's going to get people more involved, make it more of a conversational delivery. But you'll find that some singers, when they start singing, their voice is totally different. So making that transition would be weird. There are some singers who've got a very nasal sound to their voice when they sing, but not when they talk. So if I was going uh, and getting that nasal sound and going, oh, life that's full, and then I go back to my talking voice, it doesn't work because the singing voice is different to the talking voice. So this is the great thing about Matt is that his singing voice and talking voice are one. So that's why it sounds so good because it's just authentic. You're hearing the voice of the person talking and singing. So it means that at no point does your brain switch off or have a little alarm bell that goes off and goes, oh, hang on, this is a different voice we're talking to now. What happened to that voice of the other person we were listening to a second ago? So tonal consistency is the best way to describe it just with the talking voice going into the singing voice. And I know that I mentioned about tonal consistency throughout range, but this is another application of it to break away into talking, but still having the quality of the vocal we've just heard in the sound. But let's get back into it. Don't look back at me. Just try to forget. Why build a dream that cannot come true? So be strong, reach the stars now. Walk away, walk on. If I heard your voice, I beg you to stay. Don't say a word, just run on away. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, my love. My tears will fall now that you're gone. I can't help but cry, but I must go on. I'm sad that I 
After searching so long You I loved you But told you Walk away And there we have it. You can also see how accurate Matt is pitch-wise throughout this performance, just when he breaks off into doing a little vocal rundown, which happens with the band in the background. But you'll see that he does have a tendency to be ever so slightly flat, but he then gets that vibrato involved. So as we take our way back, you can see here, let's have a little listen to this phrase as we descend. So we've got this G3 that he's just humming here is slightly flat, but then look at the way that the vibrato includes the note that is being sung or is being aimed for. And this is the point about having this vibrato is it's going to encapsulate lots of notes, two, three or four notes, but the note that is being sung is always in the middle. Or at least that's the idea. That's what singers are aiming for. When we go down to the C3, we are slightly flat and ascend a little bit with vibrato, but we still get that C3 being included in the note that's being hit with the vibrato. So it's just covering it because of the evenness, the consistency of that vibrato, it just sounds great. I've just taken it back a little bit because I know some people will say that the pitch monitor is at 440 hertz tuning and it might not have been 440 hertz tuning that the band were playing at or that the backing track was. It looks like it's probably more likely a backing track in this kind of performance, especially at the BBC. But if I let it play on a little bit, we'll have a look at the vocal waves on the screen, see where they land. Walk away. So in that example, we've got both things going on, actually. We were flat and then we were bang on. So it might be the case that that backing is not quite 440 hertz tuning. When he's holding this note, obviously it just all sounds great. And this is the thing about listening to a great singer, just their isolated vocal in a live setting sounds great. <laughs> and. I mean, more often than not, it's the case that you have to go to a studio recorded vocal with maybe a bit of reverb on there, some compression and things to make it sound a little bit sweeter. Then when it's isolated, it sounds quite good, but this is a live vocal. So again, just on a totally different level to have this silky smooth delivery, you can really get an appreciation of his tone when you hear it isolated like this because it is so silky smooth. But just looking as we did progress here, you can see how then we are absolutely bang on 440 hertz tuning with the C4 for a time there and the B3 and then back up to the C4. So you could again argue that maybe it was 440 hertz tuning and he's just slightly flat, but then when he's singing these straight notes going, ah, he's just making that a little bit more consciously delivered and making a little bit more effort in order to hold those notes directly exactly where he wants to hit them. I'm just going to dive into it again just to appreciate this delivery that Matt's got. Just cutting off phrases and then getting into that spoken word after the singing but blending it so well. It just sounds so natural. I beg you to stay. Don't say a word, just run, run away. And again, look at the accuracy pitch wise, but just the way that he uses his body to convey all of this emotion in the song, acting out the scene of the song, you know, the story, 
as you would see it in a movie or see it on stage, He's such a physical performer and putting together that lyrical content with all of these movements makes such a huge difference. But let's get into now this spoken word part. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, my love. My tears will fall now that you're gone. I can't help but cry. I mean, it is seamless getting from that spoken word into singing back into the spoken word again. I don't think people will get an appreciation of how difficult it is to be this authentic, to get the voice to sound like a talking voice. Because if it was easy, everybody would be the best storyteller ever because everyone can do it. Therefore, everyone can connect with their audience 100% of the time. And everyone feels that emotion in the audience because the story of the song was told so well. Because they can afford to just talk it and then sing it and it all sounds like the same voice. But that rarely happens. It's all because of the level that he's at, that you can just enjoy it. And you're never worried about, oh, that note was slightly flat. Oh, that's slightly sharp. Oh, he sounds like he's straining. Oh, I'm not really into this. I don't get the story. He's not really performing very well. He's just you know <laughs> looking at the floor singing. None of that is going on. It's just a great performance all around. Interestingly, just from a pitch perspective and the range that's being covered here by Matt, if we look over at our piano, the lowest note in this song is a G sharp two, which will be just here. You can see the G two being represented underneath. I've written that in because the baritone range goes up to F4. And guess what the top note is of this song? It's an F4. So it means that Matt is covering all of the baritone range and you can see that the G sharp two, if I, we go up an octave, I always say great singers span an octave with their voices. We're going up to here and we're going all the way up to the F4 in this song. So it means that we've got pretty much two octaves worth of range in this performance because our G is here and the G sharp is here. So just a couple of semitones off that kind of range. So really impressive from that standpoint of having a couple of octaves worth of range in this performance, but I don't think anybody would ever think that that amount of range has been covered because of the way it's been delivered. And that is the great thing about Matt's voice. He's never really straining or pushing or seemingly to be doing that. It's just relaxed the whole time, but he's covering a hell of a range. He just makes it look ridiculously easy and it keeps that smooth tone all the way through, controlled vibrato the whole way through. So it's just a faultless vocal from beginning to end with pitch, all of the techniques that he's applying, vibrato, and slides as well, glissando, the way that he slides into notes, ascending, descending, but overall tone, just two octaves of a smooth sounding voice that isn't straining. But thank you guys so much for requesting this video for me to take a look at. Keep those suggestions coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.